Well, hello there. Hey guys. Welcome to a very different episode of <laughs> Massey Art Studios. <laughs> we're Taylor Tart jumping up and down in the, in the screen. Um, it's a very different episode because we're going to paint side by side. We are. One of the popular episodes that we have on the channel that only went up a few months ago was what is the difference between a flip cup and a grenade? Well, we showed you, but we kind of poured them separately. I think we might have layered the cups differently. Yeah. That's not really a side-by-side -side comparison. No. So we thought to do it side-by-side. -side. So on this episode, we're going to be pouring next to each other, and yeah. we decided to try and do it in one take. One take. One people. take wonders. One take. So there's going to be some shenanigans and some chit-chat and stuff, but it's going to be 30 minutes of us pouring. So Gina is going to be up afterwards, but she's going to be going at 40 minutes past the hour. So that's 11.40 central, central, which is 12.40 eastern, which is actually 9.40 pacific. There you go. Oof, that might not have been the first time I've tried to say that. Math is hard. Math and geography and time zones <laughs> are difficult. So please stick around for that, and then there's a train after it too. Um, but let's get to the table. We'll let's tell get you to the table. everything that we're doing. This will be a tutorial. It's going to be step by step. So come and see the difference between flip cups and grenades. And we'll see you at the end. Well, hello and welcome to the table. Jeremy doesn't know what I got planned for today. I don't. You are, and, and... Oh. Hello. And, and hello, Jeremy. <laughs> so you will have just heard in the intro and the outro that we're going to do a side-by-side, -side, and literally side-by-side, -side, both of us on camera at the same time, comparison of Le Grenade yep. and Le Flip Cup. We did this three, four, five months ago, and it's one of our most watched videos. So clearly it's something that you guys want to know and explore. Yes. Because they're very, very similar techniques other than the addition of the pin. Yes. You know, you can layer them the same way, you can flip them both the same way, but the pin and how the paint comes out the cup is what creates it's the difference. Different. Yeah. So we're gonna do this side by side, and where we've done these before, we've poured them separately. I think maybe using the same colors. This time, we're gonna, we're gonna layer the cups exactly the same. We're gonna pour them at the same time. We're gonna flip them at the same time to try and get it as controlled as an experiment as we can. Okay. So that we can do an actual side-by-side -side and literally side-by-side -side comparison. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. So that's gonna be my plan. So you're gonna be watching both of us do this at the same time. I'm going to put myself in your hands though, Show Pony, because oh you're going to pick the colours to layer into the cup and I'm going to just layer it in exactly the same way. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. Uh, indeed, indeed. Um, I've got two 14 by 18 inch canvases. Mm -hmm. For anyone out there that wonders what we do with them, well, I'm going to show you. We back them with blue tape, we put four pins inside them, and then we spray them with water. And the whole point of that is to keep these canvases super tight because whether you're painting or whether you're resining, your substrate, you want that to be as, as flat tight as possible. And flat as, per, as possible. Yeah, you don't want either everything pooling in the middle or you don't want things rolling off the sides yeah. of the edges. Now, you know, because you're putting pins in wood frames that are not you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, there will be a little bit of tiltage. Yeah. But when you leave them to dry, you want to make sure that they are as straight as possible. And you can use popsicle them. sticks underneath underneath to, to level Absolutely. it out. Absolutely, yeah. Craft sticks, popsicle sticks, pieces of cardboard, whatever you can. Exactly that. Now, I didn't tell you that I put that there for you so you knew oh. where the edge of your filming was. Um, so that's a little gauge for you so you know what you can be in and out of camera. Okay. <laughs> and I forgot to say, we're going to try and do this in one take. Oh, God. We're going to try and be the Karen Carpenters of the fluid art world, one take wonders. Okay. So no editing from this point. No rainy days on Sundays? Or top of the world looking down on creations. <laughs> So everything that we say, so be careful what you say, is going to be in this episode. Or is it rainy days on Mondays? Always <laughs> <get it> down. <laughs> Don't know. I do love the Carpenters, but I'm not exactly sure of that one. I love them. Rainy days on Mondays get me down. I don't know that one. Or is it Sundays? I can't remember. Every, someone will tell us out there in the, in the description <laughs> box. Karen Carpenter was well known for just going into the sound meeting booth and filming her song in one take. Oh, really? Yeah, it was like, I remember producers saying she's the only person in the world that they've ever worked with that could do that. They just were like, okay, Karen, go home now, you're done. Off you go. 
So that's why she I called her. She was so talented. And beautiful. And beautiful. Yeah. Anyway, enough about Karen Carpenter. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you about the colors that we've got on the table because these are all leftovers. We've had a lot of people on our socials, especially on our Facebook of late, go, that's a waste of paint. But because they're just seeing it on Facebook and they're not watching the 30 minute episode. Yeah. So they don't get to hear that we've mixed the acrylics with pouring mediums and a lot of time the leftover paints and blah. Anyway, you guys know out there. So I'm gonna to say to you that a lot, of the, a lot of these are custom colors. Yes. Because I mixed three colors of green together and you know four colors of blue together. But we definitely do have, we have white, we have gold, 24 karat. Yes. We have this delicious like coppery brown. Okay, that was the, uh, that was that Pabeo chestnut. Mixed with. Mixed with the coffee bean. I love that one. Yeah. This is definitely a flow extender of darkness and this is, Payne's gray, there's black, and there was a bit of Prussian blue in there. Oh, perfect. So it's super it's gorgeous. dark. gorgeous. Then we've got this green, and this was definitely a cacophony of green gold. There was a, a an Arteza, like pearl green in here, but it's a really beautiful green. That's gorgeous. Nicolazzo gold. Yeah. Mixed with a little bit of 24 karat gold. Nice. This is definitely Bordeaux red. Yeah. This one was a really beautiful mix of greenish blue. And then there was turquoise phalo oh, nice. and another kind of bluey color in there. This one is permanent blue violet, I believe. Or is it permanent red violet? No, that's that looks like prism violet. Oh, is it violet you're turning violet violet? I think it's violet you're turning violet. Well, it is now because there's four <laughs> shades of violet in there. Uh, oh, yeah, because here's this is permanent red violet. That's I think that was permanent blue violet. violet. Hmm. And then this is indigo that's been mixed with some colors too. So we've got a cacophony of like fun colors here. We don't have to use them all. Show no. me. I was just putting them on the table for us to use. Them. Okay. You've got a pin in your cup for grenade. Yes. I've just got a plain cup because I'm going to do a flip. Okay. Where can you see flip cups? Where can you see flip cups? At the world's largest pouring convention. That would be poor kind. It would from be. From August 6th to the 9th. <laughs> exactly that. I think we're damn nearest sold out, but there are people that for some reason can't go and do put their tickets up for sale. Yeah. So if you think that you might be able to get to Las Vegas now, keep your eye on all of the Facebook channels. There's the TLP channel, there's the Shelly Art channel. People are putting up comments in there saying, I can't go anymore, does anyone want to buy my ticket? So you can still grab yours if you, yeah. if you haven't already. There's about 350 students going this I year. I know, it's crazy. The world's largest. Okay, show pony, let's get to this. You, I'm gonna lay my cup in exactly the same way, so it's all about you and your color choices. The only thing I'm gonna ask you to think about is light dark, light dark. Yes. And not pearl on pearl moments. Yes. But it is a flip cup and a grenade, so that matters definitely less than anything else. These are really hard colors that we had left over to, to do this with. Do you want me to pick the colors then? Um, or are you okay with it? I think I'm okay with okay, it. Okay, just go light dark, light dark, baby. You got yeah. this. You know, yeah. we don't have to use isolation layers in flip cups and and grenade pours because part of this is all about those wonderful colors blending. Yeah. It's not like a ring pour where you're gonna see really fine lines. Yeah. So just think about going lighter and darker, lighter and darker as we go through the layers. Okay, let's get to this. Okay. You go first. All right, so I'm gonna pour a little bit of white in the bottom of my cup. Okay, I'm gonna do the same. And we're not dirty layering, by the way. We're gonna layer, layer. Oh, oh, well, hang on a minute. No, no. No, do you want a dirty layer? Dirty layer. Oh, okay. Well, you don't have to dirty layer. You don't have to dirty layer, but I yeah. like to dirty layer. Well, there we go. Okay, so wait, wait, wait. So you can, no, please carry on, actually. Two choices of cup layering here that we do most often. First off is the dirty layer, yeah. which we're going to do for you. I, I was thinking that we were going to do um, layer layers, but, but we'll dirty layer. And what that means is that we're gonna pour the paints directly into this cup from a height and from various heights, basically getting all those colors on top of each other. Yes. If we were gonna layer the colors, we would layer them down the side of the cup and that would create distinct layers of yes. color down the cup. We'll show you as we go through this. All right, what's next? That's a great question. Okay, so um, I love this color right here. I absolutely You're love that You're probably gonna use it. Okay. You know, don't forget, we're not we're not going to be cutting out on this one, so you can't spend 15 minutes thinking about the next color going in the cup. Okay. Shoot from the hip. All right, shoot from the hip. Yeah. I'd love to use that green. Um, the only thing is that, yeah, 
Okay, so I'm gonna start with, I believe, a little bit of this blue here. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I'm gonna take this stick out. Oh, I, I, this might be a 45 minute episode, folks, as Jeremy decides to take sticks out of cups. <laughs> I'm gonna do exactly the same. Try and put in the same amount into the cup. Okay. This is yes. the wonderful green gold concoction. I think I'm gonna use a little bit of this. Okay. You can, yeah, go for it. That was a base coat concoction, very dark colors. Got it. I'm gonna put exactly the same as you in. I'm following your lead. Okay. This was the Bordeaux Red. I know, which I like. Yeah, we, I love we got a red. big tub big of this tub one. Of it. Yeah, because we do use this one. I might put a little bit more of that in there than you did. Just a little smidge of the gold. Okay. Got it. So I think um, we we look like we're kind of at the same height, but I think I might put I might have been a little bit more generous. A than little you bit so more far. generous. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go back in with. We've still got colors you haven't used. Yet. I know. I, I don't know which colors to use next. How about you choose some? But they're all. But it, it really, really doesn't matter an awful lot when you do this kind of technique. You can just throw these in, baby. All right. Well, I don't know why you're overthinking this one. I am. I'm overthinking. Yeah. It. Don't worry about it. The contemplation of life and pain. Let's put this one in next. Okay. Pain indeed. The pain of color choices. Oh, I love indigo. Some of this really beautiful. It's definitely been mixed with a lighter. Yeah, it has. A lighter Arteza color for it sure. Has. Yeah. I think we're back to kind of on the same level in terms of yeah, pain. Yeah, I think so too. All right, go for it. Did you put this one in yet? I did. Okay. Which one do you want to do next? Um, I haven't put the green in there. Okay. I said we weren't going to use all the colors, but we totally can. Ooh, that was a lot of green. Well, I will do the same to keep this a controlled experiment. All right, wow, that was a lot of green. It was. But look, we're at the same level on the cup now. Yeah, okay. Maybe Coppery? I'll... Copper? No more gold. Let's try some of the coppery color. Okay, yeah. this one? Yeah. We haven't put that one in yet. No, we have not. I'm interested to see like what the difference between the guild and that one would be. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, we don't have to fill this whole cup. Yeah, I think no, that's good. Are you good with that? Yeah, I'm good with that. All right, let's move these out of the way. Just take them to one side so we've got a clear runway. Now, now I, go on, sir. Now, are you using the white? Or are you using the darker color for your base no, coat? We're going to use the same color. Okay, so white. Yeah, if that's what you want, yeah. Are we gonna, we're gonna flood our canvases first, right? Yes. Okay, so let's move our little cups to one side. So you've got a couple of choices here when it comes to flooding your canvas or using a flow extender. Yes. If we were to flood the canvas, what that means is we're gonna put a paint on here tilt it, spread it all out so that there is a base coat all over this canvas. And then we'll flip our cups. And what that does is that when you flip the cup on top of, of the, the, the canvas, it's paint on top of paint. So what happens is, is that that paint slides smoothly over the canvas, over that, to, over the, over that bottom layer of paint. Right. And um, versus a flow extender, which you don't put any paint down, you flip your cup, mm -hmm and then you put paint around the composition when you lift your cup up. Right. And, uh, and that kind of anchors the paint into the center of the cup and the center of the canvas. Canvas, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Is there a right and a wrong answer? Not really. No. It's really just about how you kind of want to manipulate your paint. Yeah. But for these, this style, we really do tend to put base coats down. We do. Most of the time. Yeah. All right, let's do that. So we're going to grab that white, sir, and we're going to share this between ourselves. Okay. 
So if you want to use half of it, and I'll use the other half. Okay. This white is a mix of just flat titanium white, and there's some pearl white mixed in here. When I say leftover paints, I really do mean it. This was probably leftovers from maybe three or four different pours that we've done over the past few weeks. Yeah. And you can use any color as your base coat because you're going to pour over the top of it and slide it right off. So unless your intention was to use negative, negative space. space, because then if you wanted to leave some negative space on the canvas, you want to choose a base coat color that will either complement or contrast what's in your cup. You just have to consider it at that point. Yeah. But for some reason, you and I find it really hard to leave negative space. I think it's because we're both just big fans of color. We are big fans of color. So we really don't like leaving a lot of something on the canvas. I think we have to intentionally think about it whenever we do it. So I'm just taking my fingers and just making sure that my canvas is completely covered with paint. We don't have gloves, uh, paper towel, right? No, I have to go get some other. No, it's okay. Paper. No, it's okay. It's okay. I don't need it. I do not need it. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have painty fingers. Painty fingers. Painty fingers. Oh no. Now, um, the next thing that we would do is torch off our base coat just to make sure that there's no bubbles. But you know what? Because we're going to flip onto this one, let's just let's not bother with that for the quick second, and let's just get these paints onto the. Okay, let's do that. Jeremy's giving me a weird look off camera. I am. All right. I'll get it. There we go. Would you grab some of the paper towel while you do it for me do? Whilst he's gone, I'm just going to entertain you because I did tell you that there's going to be no edits. So what you don't see off camera is the strange looks that we give each other, the silly remarks that we make that normally will edit out. All the fun stuff that you don't need to see as part of a painting tutorial. But most of the time that you guys tell us actually is part of the fun. Here we go. Dogs are starting to bark in the background. Right. It is, it is not Tate. <coughs> He's been a good boy. Granny's here with us currently. Jeremy's mum's yes. with us for a few days. So he's in there. Annoying Granny. He's yes, a, he is. He's a puppy. <coughs> he so, is a puppy. So he tends to still, you know, want to jump up and like be in your face and stuff. Well, Granny is 81 and a little shaky on her pins. And so, you know, him jumping up at her is not the most conducive thing for her staying upright. So right. he hasn't knocked her over yet, but we're always very worried about it. Yeah, we're always very worried about that. <laughs> so, so normally we wouldn't have our canvases in this orientation. We'd have yeah. them the other way, but they're on the table this way so that we can keep them both in shot. Yeah. We just torched off our canvases to pop the air bubbles. Yep. Now we're going to flip these. Oh, hello, Tate. Now we're going to flip these on the canvas. Now we're both right-handed. Yeah. So this makes it easier. Give me some some um, advice about flipping a cup, sir. Um, I like to keep my elbow in. Okay. So into your side. Yeah, into my side, and okay. just, it's just my wrist really that's that's turning the cup. Okay. And so, be before you do it, where are we aiming to get the rim of the cup in the center? In the center. Okay. And we don't care if there's going to be paint coming out of this. No. Right. Okay. No. So you count us down. One, two, three. I should have asked were we were going to go on three or were we going to go on, <laughs> <laughs> on the count of three. So not that this is ever a competition, but with me, everything is a competition. Yeah, I know. If we were to look at the two cups here and say who didn't get the most paint on the canvas, who would you think that would be? Um, well, obviously it's you. <laughs> Obviously, but um, it doesn't matter if it, you get paint it on the canvas. It matters not a jot no, because a there's no. going to be another 15 or 16 yeah. ounces of paint on here in a second. Yeah. Now, two trains of thought again. If you're going to flip your cup, yeah. I like to leave this cup on this canvas for a good few minutes. Oh yeah. And the reason is because the the paint is that was at the bottom of the cup has to get to the top of the cup because the top of the cup is now the bottom of the cup because it's been inverted on yes. the canvas. Um, unlike the grenade, when Jeremy pulls the pin out, the air rushing in the cup is going to push the paint out. Exactly. With me, 
my paint coming out is me lifting it up. So I really want to make sure that all the paint is at the bottom of this cup as much as I can. Yeah. But a couple of minutes is all you need. Now we're going to flip these or lift them or whatever we're going to do one at a time. Yes. So do you want to go first? Yeah, because I'm going to show, let me go first because I want to show how the paint reacts to, to, to the air pressure pushing it out. Right, okay, go for it. Yeah. All right, because so, you're not okay. going to lift your cup up. No, So let me count you down. In three, two, one. And see how you get so much movement? Like, it's literally pushing traveling. the paint yeah. out. Yeah, it's traveling across the canvas. Now, you could lift the canvas up, you can move the cup, you can do whatever you want, yeah. oh. just like that, to help you get all that paint out of yeah. it. Now, are we also going to show them how to lip? Yes. Okay. So once Jeremy feels like the majority of his paint is out of the cup and the cup isn't moving anymore, he's going to pick it up. He's going to use the lip of his cup and all those drips to create some kind of composition on the canvas. Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to do something similar, yeah. but I don't have the air rushing into the cup to push it out. So instead, I'm going to just lift the cup up and let the paint come out of the cup. And then I'm also going to lip it. Just like that. All right, next we need to take that torch again and pop these boobles. Oh yeah, definitely. Any immediate observations, Jerry, between the two? Um, yes. My colors are more, like, dispersed. Blended. Blended than your colors. Right. Your colors came out of the cup almost as if it was layered. Okay. Yeah, so my cup, and of course I threw the little bams in there whenever I just drizzled on right. top of there because I like a little bit of added extra yeah. something. You're, you're a little flary. I am a mm -hmm. little flary. And not fairy, fairy. <laughs> He's a little fairy. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you like to have that added in fairy in your composition. <laughs> <laughs> no one could call you a little fairy. No, that's no. True, no. Mm -hmm. So, um. <laughs> Go and pop your bubble balls. Yes. But yeah, you're I'm right. Shut my mouth. Then. No, 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 please don't. No, what Jeremy's saying is because his paints came out under the lip of his cup, there's a lot more blending. Yes. Whereas on my composition here on the left, or it could be on the right as you're looking at it, there's definitely a lot more distinction between the colors. Pop in the air bubbles. Why? Because what happens is if you don't pop the air bubbles and you stretch this uh, paint all over your canvas and you let it dry, it will leave big pock marks all over your, your beautiful painting. So you want to pop those bubbles so that way it doesn't ruin your painting. This is just a chef's kitchen creme brulee torch. torch yeah. They're like 15 bucks off Amazon and then you just use butane gas in it so it'll last you forever and it's clearly very well used. The other thing that popping the bubbles will also do is it will help you get cells in your composition if that's what you're going for because underneath these bubbles here there's different colors and, yeah. as, and as you pop it what you're going to get and what you're going to do is encourage those other colors to come to the surface. Absolutely. Now we're going to tilt this the same way okay yeah we'll just we'll tilt it to the corners and to the middle and but we'll do it exactly the same okay so i want you to follow me okay if, if this is okay sure so the weight of our paint is directly in the directly middle of our in canvases the center. okay and we're so we'll tilt this at the same time now the way that you tell where you're the way that your paint is, it's the part that's moving the fastest. It is, it is. But I can, absolutely right. But where you've done some kind of huge big composition, you know, that the weight of the paint could be over here. Well, yeah, whenever here. you tilt it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You'll see. But I can, I know fairly well that because this is a round composition currently, that most of our paint yeah. is just right here. Yeah. So we're going to go corner to the middle. Okay. Corner to the middle. Okay corner to the middle corner to the middle we're okay. just gonna we're gonna here, anchor here. and anchor yeah. yeah absolutely okay then we're gonna look at it and see if there's anything else that we want to tilt off okay so let's do this together sure i don't think we've ever tilted together maybe we have i haven't it is now tilting time what time is it it's double canvas tilting time 241 let's do 241 <laughs> 2 41 let's tilt these bad boys off so we're going to this corner first show yes me. and i'm not gonna i'm not going to put music over this one so what we're doing right now is just stretching the composition down the canvas. Now, 
you can see that these are moving fairly well and quickly and there's a couple of reasons for that one the amount of paint we've got on the canvas and two the fact that we put a base coat on the canvas yes so now that we've got our composition to this corner we're now going to lift it up and get the paint back to the center mine's there yeah mine is too okay this is like just simple how you tilt out an acrylic painting on a canvas. I see a lot of bubbles in mine. Okay, go ahead. I'm gonna to torch it. And I'd yeah, like you to do the same. Yes. You know, listen, we've just, we've poured paints into a cup from up high, then we've flipped it onto a canvas. There's bound to be bubbles here because you're yeah, creating churning and stuff. Mine's popping a lot of bubbles. I really like your blue that I you've managed too. to keep over I here. I do too. All right. So now our weight of our paint is back here again, mm -hmm. we're gonna go over this corner. Okay. Let's tilt it off. Not trying, I'm trying not to lose too much paint off the sides, we're just going towards that cat corner at the moment. I, know, I didn't wanna lose that blue, but. but. But making sure that everything is covered. All right, now back to the center, sir. Let's do that. Doopy doopy doo, okay. Seeing the weight where the weight of the paint is. As soon as I see the movement being in the center of the canvas, I'm gonna put it down. Got it? Yep. So now hopefully you'll understand the reason why the pins are here. Because what I can already see is this really beautiful composition on the side of my canvas. Yes. Well, if those pins weren't on here, what was gonna happen is as I lay this canvas onto what was normally plastic or something. Yeah. As it continued to drip off the sides, it would mess up the sides of the canvas. Yeah. And we painted, sorry, we put the tape on the bottom in order to keep that nice and clean. I would like to turn my canvas around. Oh, okay. Let's yeah. do that. Okay, let's do it. So we're pouring away from ourselves. Yes. Okay, got it. That makes sense. Okay. Um, if I were to look at these side by side right now, there is a lot of similarities in the composition. I feel like we've got a lot of the same colors peeking through. But what you absolutely have is way more blending. Yeah. There's way more of this kind of mixing of the colors, whereas yeah. mine is a little brighter and a little bit more blocky. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. This side or this side? The right side. The right side. Okay, let's do the right side next. So in, when we're tilting, Jeremy and I are just holding onto the pins underneath the canvas. And we're just literally tilting the paint. It's kind of like you know, a game where like, you know, you're wanting to get the edge of where the paint is moving to the edge of your canvas because we're trying to anchor the colors over the side of the canvas. And when once that has happened, we're then gonna move the weight of the paint back down to the center again. Oh, I need to get more off my side. Because now we're gonna finish off that final corner and stretch there. the paint out one last time. So you're moving the weight of your paint back down to the middle. I am. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yours is very, very cosmic. It's yeah. like very like nebula. It looks like, you know, the, the, the sky in a space movie. Right. Sci-fi movie, okay. I like how we've both got kind of the similar amount of white, so we've been tilting this very, very same. Yeah. Now we're gonna go off this corner. Perfect. I was a little afraid of the green in here. I, I was, was too. I will not lie, but I actually like how it has interacted with all the other paints. Man's moving slow. Yeah, we, we had just the right amount of paint for this 14 by 18 canvas, but it's definitely still moving. And once it's anchored, I'm then gonna put the canvas down. Okay. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So now this is for me where I'm gonna have choices of whether I want to bring the weight of the paint back to the center to stretch out any of the edges, whether you wanted to just leave it, whether there was anything else you wanted to do. I'm gonna bring mine down just a little bit towards the center again. I really kind of like that green corner. What are you gonna do, show pony? 
I think I might come down this way a little bit with it. Yeah. There's still enough paint on this canvas because it's still moving. Actually, I really like this blue. Yeah, I liked my blue here on this side, so I just tilted to get rid of the purple that was there so I could anchor the blue on the corner and then tilted it out. Just It was just a little I bit love of- love yours. A little bit of finessing. Yeah. I like yours too. Oh, I like mine. Yeah? Yeah, I do. I like mine a lot. All right, side-by-side -side comparisons. Extremely similar. Kind of. In the color palette. Oh, in the color palette, yes. You but can, in the design. Different. Totally different. You can definitely see all the colors in both of the pieces. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing has completely disappeared. But again, what I'll say about a flip uh, cup versus a grenade is, with a flip cup, you tend to see the colors a little truer. Yeah. Whereas with, oh, I just put my finger in it. Whereas with the grenade, what you're seeing is a lot more blending of colors. A lot more blending of colors. It looks, it definitely looks more spacey. Yours definitely has, uh, it has more movement in right. yours. I, yeah, I would agree with that yeah. for sure. Movement because you can kind of see the flow of the lines in Oh yeah, in it. totally. You can, it looks like the paint is moving. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mine looks a bit more like a Aurora Borealis and yeah. yours looks, looks more like, like a, cos, a Cosmos. Yes. You know, still, but still very, really, really pretty. I, I really like yours a lot. Be careful, don't get more paint. I know, I know, I don't want to. So well, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just wipe off our hands real quick, but we're gonna torch this one again. Um, it's, this is the most important torching because what's going to happen next is we're going to put these to be dry, to dry. We're gonna cover them with some nets, which I'll show you in a second. But if we did not torch at this point, any of the air bubbles that will come to the surface, surface as it dries will dry in the composition and it will create all these terrible little pop marks in your terrible. painting. And it's like, it's like dimples in the paint and it's really not very nice. It really does like have a very negative impact on your piece. So I'm really making sure that and popping all the bubbles that might be lying underneath here. Popping bubbles. Popping bubbles. Now I'm not staying in one place on the canvas for very too long. I'm not trying to burn the canvas and the actual flame is not even touching the canvas. But I'm just popping, I can see these bubbles popping it's definitely on Jeremy's here as I'm waving this torch over the top of it. Jeremy, what were you doing? I see you scraping the edges. Yes, I'm getting underneath here and I'm dragging the stick along the edge. So we didn't edit, we actually just ran out of time because it'll, right. it'll only film 30 minutes 30 at a time. Minutes. Yeah. So this beautiful thing here is a picnic saver. You can get them on Amazon. It basically opens up and you're supposed to use them on tables to protect your sandwiches from the heebie-jeebies. Yes. We use them to cover our paintings so that, that mosquitoes and flies and stuff don't land in them as they dry. Exactly. So the next thing we're gonna do after we've taken you in for a close up is we're gonna put these on the floor and cover them with the mosquito nets because the hope will be that these will dry perfectly, we'll resin them, and then we'll get them over to the, to the gallery or they'll come somewhere with you. Yeah. Um, because these will be for sale just like all the other art. Or it'll go on the website, www.massiastudios.com. Yeah. All right, I enjoyed that. I did too. I liked seeing the differences between the two side by side. You have a lot more cells in yours, which I also love. Let me take you guys in for a close-up. Let's do it. Let's do it. So there you have it. There you have it. There you have it, Taylor Tart. So, Jeremy. Yes. Give me your high level observations of the difference between the flip cup and the grenade pour. Jeez. Um, well, 
We layered, or we dirty poured them the same way. Mm -hmm. um, we tried to keep the ratios correct, uh, but I really liked the movement in yours. Okay. You could really see those, you know, slides and those dips and those curves um, more so in yours, where mine came out very much so more mixed and you know blended. like a galaxy and blended and right there were like big cells and it was just luscious um but uh i love them both i thought they both came out great but there's yeah. definitely a difference between the two there, there is but it's not a huge difference this is not like a ring pour versus a straight pour yeah you know there's definitely a lot of similarities between the two pores. Yes. I was just looking because Tate was walking through the tripod right there. <laughs> so I was expecting it to blow. Um, but we wanted to show you that you definitely do get two different compositions. You I do. hope that was crystal clear. Or was it as clear as mud? Only you'll let us know in the comments, I'm sure. Clear as mud. As in it's not very clear at all. Oh, okay. Because it's dirty. <laughs> it's muddy. That's it. Maybe that's an English saying. Um, but please let us know whether this was fun because we'd probably like to do more of these you yes. know the difference between a ring pour and a straight pour and kind of film them next side by side as well yeah. um but we hope you like the color combos please stick around for the train if we didn't already say it thank you so very much to all the massy posse that are right here with us um on the screen as well we appreciate you guys we do and we'll be back here on wednesday for another fun pour all right all right guys have a good weekend bye guys bye